The other day, I went outside in search of some of my favorite plant medicines so that I could film them and introduce them to you here on my channel. All of these grow wild in my area. I live, you know, somewhere between Boston and Providence, and I just wanted to introduce these plant medicines to you. You might be familiar with some of them. Uh, there's only a handful here. And if you are familiar with them, you might not necessarily know what to look for if you're trying to wild harvest them in nature. So here they are. First, let's talk about mugwort. As you can see here, I happened upon an entire field of mugwort uh, upon visiting my hometown a few days ago, stopping in to visit some friends. But mugwort grows along roadsides here, it grows in ditches, grows virtually everywhere, usually not in you know, immense fields like this, but just, you know, a handful of plants here and there. And mugwort is an herb that has a long-standing association with magic and witchcraft. Um, from my experience, when consumed, when the leaves are consumed in a tea, it is a bit of a sedative, um, a similar experience when smoking it. Uh, a lot of people claim that it is useful in lucid dreaming. I haven't really necessarily notice so much of that myself, but that could be because I already take supplements that are useful in um, exacerbating lucid dreaming, most primarily acetylcholine and, uh, you know, huperja. But in addition to that, um, mugwort has been used traditionally all over the world uh, from being used in moxibustion practices in association with acupuncture in ancient China to, as I mentioned, its use in medieval Europe in witchcraft um, and virtually everywhere in between. It's been used in Korea, Japan, uh, Germany, etc., etc., etc. Mugwort, outside of its use in, in these practices, is also an insecticide. Uh, one of the easiest ways to identify mugwort is, other than obviously the leaf pattern, which you're able to see here, if you turn the leaves over, um, they do have a much more faded kind of um, desaturated look on the other side of the leaves. So that's something to look for. And mugwort uh, is has a lot of thujone in it. Thujone is common in wormwood, which is an ingredient in absinthe. Uh, and it affects your GABA receptors. I believe it's a GABA antagonist. Uh, so, you know, mugwort has relatively similar properties to that, but on a much smaller scale. So it is a very mild hallucinogen. Next, I just briefly want to talk about mullen. Mullen is this, you know, giant corn-like plant. Uh, it's not really like corn in any way, but it has this large stalk with yellow flowers that a lot of people say resembles corn. And these flowers are actually useful in pediatric herbalism. They're used to uh, help alleviate children's ear infections when steeped in oil and then heated and, and essentially dropped in the ear. Uh, and it also has mild sedative properties, uh, particularly in the roots and in the stalk as well. Uh, the leaves have been used traditionally in Native American medicine for the treatment of lung infections. Uh, it is an anti-inflammatory and can help to change the viscosity of the mucus to uh, help cause a more productive cough. Um, its sedative effects, from my experience, are extremely mild. It's actually considered safe to give to children, and that's in part, uh, people believe that one of the ways in which it helps children sleep when they do have ear infections is by uh, inducing a slight sedation as well. Last but certainly not least, I want to talk about Lactuca canadensis. Uh, this is in the lettuce family. It's also known as Canadian wild lettuce. It has very similar properties to Lactuca verosa, also known as opium lettuce or wild lettuce. Uh, that doesn't happen to grow wild in this habitat, but Lactuca canadensis does uh, in New England, which is immediately below Canada. Um, and so both of these plants actually produce a uh, white milky latex called Lactucarium. Uh, and that has sedative and analgesic properties. In fact, there are rumors that this uh, species of plant was used by Chinese immigrants when opium became unavailable in the mid to late 1800s. And canadensis can actually be more easily identified than varosa. Varosa sometimes is mistaken by some people uh, as being dandelion or vice versa. Uh, but canadensis has these beautiful serrated leaves. And again, uh, both varosa and canadensis is produce this milky latex if you were to um, cause an incision in the stock, whereas to my knowledge, dandelion does not have a similar property. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys for now, but 
Let me know what you think in the comments section. What are you, some of your favorite herbs that grow native to your area and, you know, what effects might they have? Also, uh, you know, what do, do you want to see more of these, you know, urban foraging kind of videos? What plants do you want to see me talk about? We have a lot of other plants native to this area, um, but these were, you know, three of my favorites. So I just wanted to throw these up here online um definitely if you have any questions about experimenting with these let me know uh, all of these obviously grow wild they're relatively easy to acquire at least in my region and um, all three of them are legal to harvest possess grow etc so yeah let me know what you think bye